this is Josiah Plays 7, The Days Long Gone. Alright, we are going to dismantle some shit. I don't dismantle these things, I dismantle these things. Don't dismantle the ionic liquid because you can use it. I'm not dismantling magnets because I have a guess that we'll need those for stuff. I probably shouldn't be dismantling needles. I've dismantled a lot of needles and I probably shouldn't because I'm probably going to need needles to make like you know, hypodermics or something, to make like, like injectors or, or syringes or something. Another iPad went through. I wonder if I should keep sulfur. I'm gonna keep sulfur just in case. I could upgrade the station itself. No, no, I don't have enough leather. If I wanted that much leather, I would have to make some leather out of cloth and organic. I think I have plenty of cloth and organic, though. I have 33 cloth and 56 organic. So I could make some leather, but I don't know what upgrading the station would even do. What I suspect is going to be the case is I'm going to find schematics that say you can only make this at a level 2 workbench. You can only make this at a level 3 workbench, right? That's how it's going to go, I'm pretty sure. What's up, son? How you doing? Welcome. Welcome to the GNIF. So, I mean, at this point, I, some of these I have so many, I should probably stop. Like, metal components, I have 196. Do I really need to break down every metal thing at this point? You're a bit crap, but you'll live. What's wrong? What's, uh, what seems to be the problem for you at this time? Friends! All right. Now that I've they would have you walk the path to damnation with them. Searching for more hidden shit. These uh Hello, can I help you? Oh, I didn't know you were a vendor. Heard anything about what's been going on around here lately? Funny you should ask. Some loony from Mortbane told me that the attack on the Biomancer Temple in the town wasn't actually an attack at all. He said a demon tickled the nose of a giant serpent, making it sneeze or fart or something. Anyway, apparently that's what destroyed the temple. Okay. If you ask me, you'd have to be nuts to live in a town that's swimming in deadly gas. I agree. I'd like to see what you have for sale. All right, produce. Lots of produce and a calculator. An ancient device that was used to make basic calculations. Ah, humans, you have always sought shortcuts. Yeah, well, we won the... Oh, no, we didn't really win the war. We escaped the planet in arcs. I guess that means they won the war. But now the world is ruled by humans again, not them, so how'd that work out? I have a lot of house keys. Person has $28 to spend, though. 
That's the important thing for us to keep in mind. I can sell all these things. I'm up to 589. Depression kicking your ass. Oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. I definitely know those feels. I definitely know those feels. Have you ever tried Latuta? The drug Latuta? Because I started taking that, I added it. I was already taking uh, Wellbutrin or Bupropion as my as my main antidepressant, alongside my lithium and my trazodone. But Bupropion was was per se my antidepressant, and it what really wasn't helping. I was still really depressed all the time, really suicidal. But then I added this other antidepressant as well, called Latuda, and it seems to have helped me quite a bit in terms of really getting rid of the suicidal ideation and the really deep, bleak depression. I'm still not very motivated to do anything most of the time. But, like, I'm not, like, so sad that I just want to die right this second all the time since I started taking that. So, I don't know. Maybe ask your doctor if Latuda is right for you. Cha-ching. I'm a drug rep. <laughs> I like how ape meat is a thing in this. Tell me about this game. It's a stealth game primarily. It's an action RPG. It's isometric. It's got a lot of um, stealth mechanics and sneaking options. It's got a lot of cool traversal in the, the environment and like parkour and climbing and jumping type stuff. It's uh, set in a weird setting that's kind of like Numenera, but also kind of cyberpunk, but also kind of Shadowrun-ish. It's got like some magic, but the magic might not actually be magic. It might just be techno magic that's technology so advanced it's indistinguishable from magic. It might be like the Arthur C. Clarke thing. I'm not sure yet, but the, there was an apocalypse, so it's post-apocalyptic, and then... People are rebuilding, and they've come up with all their own new technology based on the technology of the ancients. But then there's mystical type shit, but really that might just be technology as well that's being utilized in a certain way. And your character, you play a character who's a master thief. And uh, basically, in the very beginning, you pull a job and it goes horribly wrong, and you get sent to this prison island. Oh so I'm on a prison island, and I'm possessed by this creature called a demon which is what who had a there was a big war between the humans and these things called demons and that's what precipitated the apocalypse but what demons are is really unclear and again whether or not they're actually something supernatural or just some sort of like i've got my own little theories that maybe they're like some sort of embodied computer ai type of things or something i don't know it's it's really it's really a weird but very interesting and a uh, unique setting. There's biomancers, there's techno magi. Um So yeah, it's got a it's got a real cyberpunk slash shadowrun vibe as well as a post-apocalyptic vibe. It's super awesome so far. It's a really interesting game. Oh, we can read about Ramas. I forgot about this guy. We'll read about him sex. So yeah, so demons. It says the ancients made an incredible discovery. They brought creatures called demons into the world. This new form of life. But it doesn't say that it's anything mystical per se. They're just called demons. But I have a feeling that everything in this is really based on technology. That's the sense I'm getting. Is that it's like Numenera. Where these demons are not like some magical beings, but they're actually they were actually created via technology somehow. Or that says no, it just came out yesterday. Well, day before yesterday. It just came out. Not early access. This is the full game. It's on Steam right now for like twenty-seven dollars. And as you can see, it's a really big world. This is an open big open world prison island. And uh, all I've explored of it is this little area right here so far. And there's a lot more. 
and it's it's a full RPG, you know, stats, uh, skills, equipment, inventory, some kind of weird skill trees where you slot different chips here, and then they give you the ability to get other abilities, and you slot those abilities, and then you can slot other things to modify those abilities, and uh, this crafting, full crafting system. 27 you don't have. Yeah, I hear that. The only reason I was able to get it is because a new month just started and I got my money and I'm in the I'm in that first phase of the month where I can do irresponsible spending before I go into the second phase of the month where I realize I don't, I don't have enough money to live on and I start freaking out and having to live like a fucking vagabond because I spent too much money in the first part of the month. I, I, yeah, that's why I was able to get this. I think you know what I'm talking about, son, because you're laughing. And you can pick anybody's pocket, and you can steal from things, and you can sneak. And I've got, like, right now I have one ability, but it's pretty cool. I can, uh, teleport. And, but then I can parkour around and, like, climb on top of shit. Get up on the rooftops of whatever I want to do. See, I can get on things. Oh, shit! You can go through all the windows and stuff. He sent me a whisper. Okay. And the combat's pretty interesting. Oh, and you can do all the normal stealth things, like you can sneak up behind people and stealth kill them. Or you can sneak up behind people and choke them out non-lethally. And I've got all kinds of cool items now, like... Decoy grenades and darts that disable electronics and darts that knock people out. And daggers to murder people and a rock that I can throw to cause a distraction. And all that kind of stuff. Is it worth the amount of money or should I just get Shadowrun? Well, this and Shadowrun are extremely different games. Rubber Chuba. And by the way, hello Rubber Chuba, welcome. How you doing? This and Shadowrun are extremely different. Setting-wise, there's a lot of similarities. Oh, surprise, here's a gift. Thanks, Brad. Having issues with my Um Welcome to my shop, prisoner. I'd like to see what you have for sale. It's fully voice acted. With dialogue options and so forth and actual choices that you can make. Oh yeah, I just sold a bunch of stuff to this lady. I'll be going now. Robert Chuba, um, how you doing? Sh this game is a action RPG with a stealth focus. Shadowrun is a turn-based RPG, so it depends on which of those you like more. This has sort of a really interesting sort of art style as well, like a cell-shaded, almost like Borderlands kind of looking... I don't know. No, no, I don't want to talk to you again. This is the artist guy again. You can steal from... Fo oh, and you've got this cool vision mode. Which will highlight... Um, things you can loot. And it'll highlight, like, power cords of, like, things to, like, turn off cameras and stuff. You can follow the power cords back and find where you shut them off. And then you mouse over a person. 
it shows you some information about them and it also shows you their vision cone and then like I can mark this guy and now that he's marked I keep seeing his vision cone and where he goes until I mark someone else I want to know what's in this place well there's a window Am I a master thief enough? Oh, you can even look through the windows instead of... Do I need to build a garbage can tower to do this or what? I can open it. It looks like that's more of a way out of this building than in. There's a day-night cycle though. Oh, there's a window right here. Oh, hold on a second. Come on, Steam. Quit fucking around. No, this is not the time to not respond. You know what you were programmed to do, Steam? You were programmed to fucking respond, so respond. Your maker wills it. All of a sudden, everything on my computer wants to go super slow. Please read this agreement in its entirety. You must agree with the terms. Yeah, sure. I'm going to read that when hell has frozen over. Oh, shit. You should have told me what this was before I activated it. I already own this. I bought this in a, in, in a humble bundle, and I have a key for it that I just haven't put in yet. Well, now I can give that key away. Or I could give that key to you, and you could give it back to somebody else. But thank you so much anyway. I appreciate the thought. I assume you own it too, right? You're going to play it? All right, hold on. Now I'm... My computer is being stupid in a variety of ways. It's multiplayer, you already own it? Okay, cool. Well, I want to see what's in this house. I said I want to see what's in this house. Well, I get a nice... Normally what happens is... You... Well, there's nobody in there. So the question is, can I get into this house without anybody seeing me? Let's quick save. I think now's my shot. I don't have a key for it. If I use the drill, they'll hear it. So I got a lock pick. At least it was an easy lock pick. No! Ah, oh, somebody saw me and now he's... Okay. Don't shoot me with a fucking crossbow. I'm getting wrecked, as I always do. So, in this town, if you get seen doing anything you're not supposed to, they will fucking obliterate you. <laughs> That's, that is what I have learned. All of a sudden, 18 dudes show up and, and totally wreck you. I only paid 82 cents? Oh, wow. Wow, that's a good sale. I only paid, like, a dollar for it myself. You definitely did not make Steam. Well, no, of course I didn't make Steam, but I'm speaking for 
the maker of Steam. I think it's safe to say that the maker of Steam wanted Steam to respond. So when I said your maker wants you to respond, you know. Okay. No, they don't like... Oh, no. There's a fucking cop right here. Uh, ignore me, everybody. I didn't mean to just do a dagger move right there. Alright, this is where the day-night cycle will come in handy. Let's change it to here. Ah, uh, and there's still 8 trillion people out. Don't you fucking people have bed to go to or something? And why is everybody walking so fast? I think I fucked up my game somehow. Because I'm pretty sure people don't normally walk around this quickly. Ah, oh, that guy's guarding this fucking place, but is he guarding this entrance? So I can unlock this door or I could just go through the window. LOL. But I need to kind of get out of here quickly because you saw it on your wish list. So, all right, thanks, Brad. That is super cool of you. I want all this stuff. All these th useless things can be broken down into ingredients that can be used for crafting. So, I take everything. Everything. No! He just walked in! So now if I wanted to just... Oh, here's the... Yeah, we're done. I mean, I could get away and go hide somewhere and everything... No, and everything would be cool. But I don't want this outcome to actually be what happened. I could hide in these bushes right here. So I'm gonna quick load. All right, good night, Tim. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. Thanks for chatting. Have a good one. See you next time. Oh, yeah, I want Star Ocean so bad. So bad. The thing is, I believe you can use RPG Maker to make a game that is not a JRPG. I think just because the graphics may look JRPG-like, that that does not constitute the game being a JRPG. There's a lot of elements to JRPG design that I would not have in my game. Let's try the drill. That guy's gonna come back. Oh god, he, here he comes! Oh no, he just walked across to the... Oh, that's what I should do. I should mark this guy. So that I stay aware of what he's doing. He saw me. Lisa was side scrolling kind of RPG. I don't know what that is. I died. I really want to steal this guy's shit. But... I really want him not to catch me. That's the whole Master Thief thing, see? I need multiple exits. I need to unlock all these doors. If I get both doors open and the window, then I've got more ways to get in and out. Like, can I just pick this lock real quick while he's not looking? And now that I've got that lock picked, let's drill this real quick. 
Then let's pick this lock. Actually, we can just drill it. He's not going to hear it from here. All right, now that I've got multiple entrances to this place set up, i got to remember to not hide in front of people. Let's just watch this guy, see what he does. He chills there for a while, he goes inside, he comes out here. I should have marked him. If he starts to move, I'm going to bounce. He's on the move. Oh, I didn't quite get out in time. I almost pulled off the perfect score, you guys. Oh yeah, that that was amazing. That NPC in fucking <laughs> that guy in fucking um, Elder Scrolls Online. I had to assassinate him, and I was following him everywhere. He kept in public places all the time, then ate his soup for like five minutes in the crowd. <laughs> yes, I, I remember that. It was so cool. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. First things first, mark this guy. Second thing, make time pass. Then he chills over there for a while. Then he goes inside. Then he goes outside. And I go. Start stealing stuff. Then I leave. He gave me a little warning there about seeing me sneaking. So then he goes back here. Then I can come and steal from this. No, stop it. Out, out, out. Perfect crime. Perfect crime. All this guy's stuff has been taken, and he is none the wiser. I don't need this guy marked anymore. Let's go back. To like 9 a.m. What's this forbidden area down here? Nobody will notice if I just take from this real quick. Or care. Joining our 
cause is the one true path to salvation. <laughs> Joining our cause is the one true path to salvation. Somebody didn't like that. Somebody wants to fight me. Motherfuckers, cuz I'm out of here. Ow, ow. Alright, let's just quick load. Look, I just want to steal all the things in town. Is that so wrong? Is that really so wrong? I want to steal everybody's shit and break it into its most basic constituent components and then store all those components in a barrel. Is that so wrong? I mean, we've all had similar desires, have we not? Quick save. Doing them one at a time just in case somebody starts getting suspicious. So I don't know what's going on inside here. Oh yeah, that's where that guy got killed. Oh. Can hide in a bush and loot stuff. Yo, 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 Sin! You're done streaming? Done with your big Neverwinter action? Frying pans! Dropping me the torch? Nice. Wait, did I just see some kind of fucking train zoom by up ahead? Overhead? Oh, there's a, a roof here. This is like a maglev track or something. I wonder if I can get on the track and then get killed when the when the thing comes. Let's see if I can loot this with that. Oh yeah, there's totally a. I can hide in this bush and we can steal this. Five. All right, in my pockets. get on this can I jump to my death is the question we need to ask ourselves and the answer is always yes I've jumped to my death so many times in this game I gotta say for being a master thief this guy dies from some short ass falls I'm just saying
I mean, I'm not saying that... What's this place? I'm not supposed to be in here. Oh no. Are those people upset? Yes, because they're climbing up after me. Let's just see. How upset are they? Not that upset. It was kind of a kind of a warning. Like, hey, don't come in our window, motherfucker. I really want to see if I can get on top of this maglev thing. One of his shortfalls? Aha! Uh -huh, Nox! Are you serious? I jumped right on top of the... Dang! Ah! I guess we've answered that question. No. You cannot... Did I miss it somehow? I must have missed it. It doesn't make any sense that they would make that thing just no collision. Like, you literally can't land on this. That doesn't make any sense, given that you can traverse and climb on everything. Alright, look. I'm literally on top of it, right? If I step off right here, I should be able to... All right, I guess I'm wrong. You absolutely passed through that. Lesson learned, everybody, you're gonna play the game seven. Do not attempt to get on top of the, uh, the, the maglev or whatever it is, the train, the rail. Do not attempt to get on that because you will pass directly through it and you will die. All right. This is where these guys are. Egon and the. You again. I th as. Oh, I think I need to still read about Ramus, actually. No. Wait. Do they not care? They don't care. Ooh, a new Malkin the Explorer book. Well, if they don't give a fuck, I'll take it all. Maybe it's because they like me. Malcolm the Explorer, Chapter 1, Wandering a World in Chaos, Part 2. Plan was derailed. Needs new train of thought. <laughs> Nox, fuck. Uh, chaos churned around Vigo as he wandered, but his isolation brought him peace. We can imagine that when word reached him that the Gwanter tribe had been annihilated in an altercation with the Mulika tribe, I have one of their sweet rolls, he shed a solitary tear that continued on his journey. Even though the maps Vigo Malkin drew are still used today, his illustrious name has largely been forgotten. Indeed, one of the few references to him is on the desolate island of Peh. I can't wait to find out more. So I can take anything I want in you guys' house? Really? Is that, the, is that what we're playing here? Well, loot means you've never looked inside that container, I think. Steal means you have looked inside it and haven't taken anything or have already taken everything. I think that's generally how it works. See, these guys don't mind if I steal their stuff because they like me, because I saved one of their lives. Eh? Meh. <laughs> Sin. Drugan's Rise to Power Part 3. Chapter 3. Enlightenment. Achievement unlocked. Bookworm. Enlightenment. Word of Drugan's return spread across the world within a matter of days. Every messenger and traitor carried word of Drugan of the Mulika, who wandered into the forsaken lands and then returned with great power. 
Shortly after, emissaries from every tribe were sent to Mulika territory to confirm the story. Drugan wasted no time in spreading word of what he encountered on his journey to the rest of his people. They hung on every word and were awestruck by talk of his adventures and trials. He told them of his new purpose and about what he intended for his people and indeed all people of the world. He described to them a bright new future where mankind would rule supreme and how their destiny lay out among the stars. The knowledge and power Drugan returned with was not to be mocked. He used both to bring glory to his tribe by providing everything they needed. He taught them incredible things and offered to them the chance to help him forge a new civilization where all people were united towards one goal. Once the Mulika were prepared for the future, he left them and went on a second journey. This was the start of the Great Unification. Drugan went to each of the great tribes spreading word of his enlightenment. He showed them the power he had obtained and invited them to join in his great vision. Many accepted gladly to the cheers of thousands, but some resisted the calling and had to be purged, for nothing could oppose Drugan's vision for mankind's future. So, typical fucking autocratic tyrant motherfucker. The only vision allowed for humanity is my vision, and anybody that won't get That's in and follow me, so no that puppeteers repay their debts. Puppeteers repay their debts just like Lannisters. But the question is, what if I unlock this container? Will they care? Let's just drill it. Nope, they don't give a shit. Another book? I am a bookworm. What is this? What is this book? The World's Creatures on the Absence of Historical Records. It has come to my attention through the study of ancient texts, that the creatures of our time are absent from historical record. I have searched extensively through every tome I can find that predates our glorious Vetral Empire. None of them reference any of the familiar creatures that inhabit our world today. I even went as far as to look for descriptions, as it occurred to me that perhaps the creatures could have been known by different names, but it's as if they did not exist prior to our age. Take the mighty Spore Ox, for example. Spore Ox, Nox. It sounds like it's a combination of a spore and an ox. There are some books I have found that describe a creature that shares some physiological similarities with the monster, but lack other key aspects. After talking with several of my learned colleagues, the only conclusion we arrived at was that between the time of the Great War and the coming of Drugan, a planet-wide extinction occurred. The few creatures that survived this catastrophe evolved and became new species which were better adapted to surviving in this changed environment. The only questions left to answer are why this extinction event occurred and how humanity survived it unscathed. How indeed. How. In. Deed. I think I've taken everything I can take. No, I don't need to hop through that window. So this is just rando guy. Where's the guy that I saved? That's Ramus. Where's the other Egon? Egon is the guy that I saved. The guy that I saved. This isn't worth much here. So know that. Ah, you again. Show me what you have available. He has no money. He just has a bunch of clothes. And lockpicks. And small syringes. I'll take these things. I have to pay four. How about if I pay you... One pretty brooch.
and I'll take a broken pitcher. And I'll take some vodka. And I'll take some bourbon. Looks like we're all squared up here. I think I'll be going now. As you wish. You know where to find me. Then I just realized I forgot to read about... I forgot to read about Ramas. This is Ramas, apparently. Ramas is a wealthy merchant based in Loomer. He specializes in exotic goods that the rich and powerful desire on the island from Hallard. He lives a comfortable life, trading goods with the Peh aristocracy for favors and riches. But the merchant also has a second identity. He has been the head of the Peh branch of the Puppeteers for many years after the previous leader suddenly vanished one night without a trace. Ramas runs his gang with a guile that no one else can match. The Puppeteers are at war with their eternal rivals, the Grits. Whilst the Grits are openly violent thugs, Ramas is the puppet master who pulls the strings behind the scenes, undermining Grit operations wherever he can. If you do a good deed for Ramas or one of his puppeteers, he can be a useful ally. If you cross him, however, he is a force to be reckoned with. Cool. And I'm slowed again. Not that slowed, apparently. Apparently I can still get up on roofs. Excuse me. Not supposed to be in here, apparently. Stealing, stealing. I'm the master thief because I'm stealing everything in this town. Ah, Drugan's Rise to Power Part 1. The Truth. Drugan's Rise to Power. Part 1. Introduction. Few external accounts remain concerning Drugan's ascension to power. Those which do exist are mired in uncertainty or butchered by a biomancer's sensors to such an extent that they are meaningless. Be under no illusion, reader. You hold a heretical book in your hands. You do so at your own risk. Chapter 1. Discovery. Drugan was always remarkable. Understand that this is not praise, but an objective observation. Even as a child in the Mulika tribe, Drugan demonstrated a razor-sharp wit and an abnormal ability to influence others. By the time he reached manhood, he was a prominent figure within his tribe. He used his rhetorical talents to manipulate and deceive other tribes into surrendering territory. As the Mulika tribe's power grew, so too did its members' adoration for Drugan. They listened to him. They followed him. This was the first taste of the worship that our emperor is so accustomed to now. Drugan's tribe were unaware that the enigmatic young man was manipulating them, too. A wiser man than I once said that any obsession is a weakness. Only time will tell whether Drugan's lifelong obsession with technology is ultimately his undoing. The Mulika tribe gathered technology, but their comprehension of it was limited. Only the Cabal Magi and Hallard utilized technology with even a moderate level of competence. Drugan spent most of his time scavenging for technology. Unlike his tribe's people, however, he didn't merely accumulate it. He broke it down, studied its inner workings, then reassembled it. Drugan had dreams of scouring the stagnant tribal civilization with the harsh winds of change. He would provide the puff. Ancient technology would be the abrasive. But the tribes were cautious. The majority were deeply superstitious and could not comprehend practical uses for these mysterious devices. The young Drugan needed a miracle. He needed to invent a prophecy 
and then fulfill it. Dun dun dun. Hey, what's up, Pizza Vu? Welcome. Welcome back. How are you doing? How are things in the land of pizza? The pizza that time forgot. I think I can drill. There's nobody around. Ping wing feather. I haven't seen one of those before. That's the first ping wing feather I've seen. Where is it? Looks like a feather. A feather taken from a common ping wing. Majestic feathers can be impressive adornments. This is not such a feather. Drugan statuette? Haven't seen one of those before either. A small statue of Emperor Drugan. As I'm sure you are aware, these are common throughout the Empire. Oh, shit! I just got caught! <gasps> he didn't notice me? What? I was literally drilling as he walked by. Oh, got lucky there. Ooh, a lot of alright. Saturday night, alright, alright! I guess it's Sunday night, but still, that's how the song goes. How am I? I'm good, and the game is going quite well. I have not been killed very many times this time, and I also have stolen lots and lots of things. Let's see what's in here. I remember that guy's house. I'm pretty sure I already stole everything from that dude. Pretty sure. So then he just leaves his place? Unattended? I'm gonna try something. Yeah, he didn't like me being in there, but I'm pretty sure that I've already that I've already robbed up on that house. I'm just going to quick save and make sure Yeah, I've already taken everything from in here. Hmm. Oh, he's got new clothes on the floor. Hmm. I don't think he knows where I am. Oh, I think he does. <laughs> I, think, I think he found me. And called the cops, and the cops came in and gave me the beat down. Again. At least in the early part of this game, I gotta tell you, if you fight the law, the law will win. I fought the law, and the law won. I fought the law, and the law won. Now, probably later you get really powerful and get all kinds of cool abilities and gear and shit, and then you can probably murder these fuckers. But, alright, so I've already stolen everything from that guy's house. What about this place? Let's look in this, let's look in this window. There's somebody sleeping in there. Two people sleeping in there. So this could be tricky. Quick save. Now I sold the energy gun pizza. Well, a lot of the guards, most of the guards have ranged weapons anyway, so the kiting doesn't work so well. 
But you can't get a single guard in an isolated location. The guards always call more guards to help them. Okay, so these people are asleep and I'm being very quiet. So here's an example of a place where I can't use the gr the drill. Cuz if I use the drill, it'll they'll hear the sound and So I got to use lock picks. Oh shit. Did she just get up? Oh shit! Like, here's an isolated guy, but one, he won't be isolated for long, because see, look how many guards are coming. I was doing it successfully, got close enough to another guard, I was back to you, then he called his friends. Yeah, maybe. I'm not saying it's literally impossible to kill one, I'm just saying it's so hard at this point that there's not really any point in trying to. Burglary gone wrong, now it's turned into murder. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Look, I'm super sneaky. They're laying it down for the night. Oh, she just got up. They didn't call the cops though. Oh yeah, they did. Here comes the cops right there. All right, maybe I'll wait until these people aren't even in there. Wait till daytime. Maybe they won't even be in there and then I can just go in and steal. They got super hearing to counter your super sneaking. I guess so. I just saw energy on cuz I'm not going to use it. It was worth a lot. Alright, so here's the new plan. Let's see what these people are doing at 10 a.m. Oh, well, she's still in there. But she's about to leave. Oh shit. He's still in here. Well, maybe I can be unbelievably slick. And be unnoticed. I was unbelievable. Oh, no, 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 no! Ah, oh, fuck me. I'm talking about how slick I am, and then I accidentally jump out the fucking window. No, 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 no. That guard got really suspicious, but he didn't actually aggro. Nobody has super herring. Do they have super herring? Good question. Jurgen's Rise to Power Part 3, I think I read. Loose teeth. Is
history of Hallard Part 2. A human skull. High tech laser flails? Master Thief, Master Flailer, are there actually flails? I don't think there are flails, no. There are axes, swords, daggers, crossbows, and guns. I think that's about it. And spears. There's also spears. Alright, so... I found some books. Oh, but apparently I've read both of those already. I'm at 105 pounds. Can I even... can't climb over this? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh, but I can jump up on this thing like it's no probs. I'm sorry, prisoner. I... See if people care if I take this stuff. Yeah, they do. Yeah, here comes the cops to murder me. Oh! Good time to end my episode and start the next one. If you're watching the stream, don't go anywhere. I'm not done playing. If you're watching on YouTube, however, that's going to do it for this episode. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays 7, The Days Long Gone.